Launchpad Bemidji with us. Good morning, Brian. Good morning. Thanks for having us again. I'm here with uh, Brian Himmelman from Himmel Research, and we're uh, excited to talk to you. Get right up into the mic, please. Hey, no problem. Um, Brian, when it uh, comes to this time of the year, spring is in the air. People are all giddy and excited for it. You guys have some pretty cool stuff going on this weekend with the uh, GigaZone Gaming Championships and the te Tech Expo. What exactly is the Norse Startup Pitch Competition? Yeah, the Norse Startup Pitch Competition is held at the uh, Paul Bunyan Tech Expo, and it's basically like a business plan competition where people go up on stage, they tell us about the problem that they're trying to solve or the opportunity they're trying to go after, their solution, how they make money for it, the market for it, um, their plans for the business, how they plan to grow it, and uh, the winner goes home with $5,000. So. so I'm thinking Shark Tank on a local level. That's pretty much it, yep. Gotcha. Um, Brian Hemmelman with us, founder of, am I saying this correctly, Hemo? Hemo Research, that's that's us. You are a professor at BSU in the TAD department, which I really wish was a thing when I was a kid because I would, definitely would have gone into that. That's just cool. Uh, you're an electrical engineer, and you make Legos for electronics. What the heck is that? Uh, well, the idea is... is uh, um, it's basically a plug-and-play system. Um, you know, we've worked uh, between you know companies coming to me when I was you know at universities, and and I did a number of years as a contract engineer. Uh, we worked with a lot of startups that had ideas for products, and uh, we helped them then design what they needed to get to, to market. Um, and you know, to do that from scratch uh, is 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 a time-consuming process. Daunting, I'm imagining. Um, well, you know, the, I think people would be surprised. You know, the amount of time and money that it takes to to develop a, a an idea and and get it to market. And uh, you know, I just saw over the years we were doing a lot of the same basic things over and over. And uh, I says, you know, there's got to be a better way to do this. And uh, so the idea is, yes, for electronic products, um, I've, I'm working on a system where uh, all the fundamental functions are basically, uh, yeah, Legos. Right? We're, we're making modules, plug-and-play modules that uh, then just uh, click together, and uh, you, you decide what you need in terms of uh, you know, whether you have sensors or Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or you know, is it battery powered or solar powered? And uh, you know, we just put the pieces together that you need uh, to, to 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 implement your your product that uh, solves a particular problem. Is there any one particular end user group you have in mind, or is it somewhat scalable to a lot of different things? Um, it's 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 a lot, but fundamentally, um, I, the our buzzword would be what's called the Internet of Things. Um, IOT, IOT. That's that's us. Um, that's that's one of the the primary markets that we're focused on, um, which is essentially connecting sensors to the internet. So you know you're taking measurements, whether it's in a factory, whether it's a remote station out in the middle of uh, absolutely nowhere, uh, and you just need to collect that data and 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 use that data. So uh, you know, we help we help you collect that data and get it uploaded into the cloud. You won uh, the first North Startup Pitch Competition. Um. What was that process like? Um, well, it's 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 kind of like what you described, right? It's essentially uh, kind of a mini version of Shark Tank. Um, you know, you 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 come, you you need to say, hey, here's here's what the the problem is. Here's our solution. Here's the market space. You know, is is there enough market to make it into a business? Um, you know, and and then explain you know how you're gonna you know fulfill that need and uh, you know turn turn a profit, make more than zero dollars. Um, that's and, always good. Uh, well, that's 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 <laughs> necessary to do it more than you know, one year or, or you know in a row. Um, and, and and you know that's what I saw when I was doing contract engineering. You know, we had a lot of people with really good ideas, um, but like I say, they didn't necessarily understand just how much money and time it took and. Uh, a lot of them never made it because you know it's it's tough to, to get those things to market. So, um, but uh, so the pitch competition, um, it's it's something that happens all over the nation. People are doing it all the time. 
um, you know, for entrepreneurial purposes and, uh, you know, trying to say, hey, you know, my idea is better than the competition and uh, you, you need to justify that. During the competition, did you get to sit in and hear the other pitches or? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How do I, I want to word this right? You want it. So your idea obviously was the quote unquote best. Were any of those other ideas that were pitched, you're like, whoa, that is a really good idea? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, the, the year that I did it, um, you know, even last year, uh, you know, at, at the last year's pitch competition, um, you know, that's the thing is, you know, there's a lot of people with a lot of good ideas, um, you know, trying to sift through those to understand, you know, what's, what's got the greatest potential, who's got the most traction um, and, and is the furthest along. You know that's the challenge, um, and so um, there's there's, you know, I, I've seen some wacky, crazy <laughs> nut job <laughs> ideas over the years, um, but there's there's a lot of people that have a lot of good ideas, and you know they're they're all struggling to to figure out how to turn that into a business. As a professor, have you had students that come to you and with an idea, and you're like, wow, this is a really dumb idea, and by the time they're done laying out their thoughts for it you're like well this could be a really good thing um not necessarily um you know here at at, at you know my previous university they were a little more hardcore on in the engineering here um that's what we're trying to develop actually you know so i teach engineering design and you know one of my visions is to be able to you know couple that with uh, the art and design people for, you know, um, the branding and the marketing and then, you know, some of the business folks from, from their marketing side um, so that, you know, people, you, you'd, you'd be surprised who has, a, who comes up with a really good idea for a solution and they're passionate about it. Um, so they maybe have a really great solution, even though they don't have the technical know-how. And so how can we, you know, collaborate and, and, uh, uh bring all the pieces necessary together to, to turn that into a potential business idea. You know, I'd really love to be able to take projects that are coming out of our engineering design classes and, and say, hey, you know, that's, that wasn't just a class exercise. That's, that's, a, that's a really good solution to mm -hmm. a real world problem. So let's, let's run with it and, and, and see if you wanted to, you know, keep going and, and turn it into a, a side business. You know, yeah, you when, it, when it comes to university projects and entrepreneurs from universities, you'd think that it's business school students coming a lot. Um, last year though, we actually had a couple of students that are in the pre-med track, they're doing biology, and they had a business, there was an app for people with autism, and it was based on all the research that they'd been doing in their medical degree or their medical uh, passion on autism. Hmm. And so those collaborations are really key, and unfortunately they didn't win the, the pitch competition last year, and, and to be honest, that is one of the unfortunate things in the pitch competition. Somebody's got to win, somebody's got to lose. Somebody's got to win, somebody's got to lose. But we had 14 applicants this year, and they were all good ideas. I could see them all working. And one person wins, but that's just a small panel of judges that's deciding who the winner is. I've seen people be last place in a pitch competition, and their business Make ends up the doing the best. Yeah. And really, it's the market that decides. So we always try to reinforce that with all of our applicants and all of our contestants, that just because you don't win doesn't mean you're going you're to have the worst company out of these. It's the market that's going to decide, and you're convincing a very small sample of people. It's four judges this year. Uh, Brian's one of the judges. Kelly Van Ert, who was on with us last month, both are, so both are previous winners. Uh, Eric Hokoff from Air Corps Aviation. And then the headline speaker at the Tech Expo, Duncan Wardle, the former head of innovation and creativity. He's sitting in on that too? He's sitting in on that. Cool. Yeah. So we've got a great panel of judges and we've got a lot of great companies. We've got two AI companies pitching. Uh, one of them pitched last year and wasn't the winner. So he's back this year, he's changed up his model a little bit. Uh, we've got a biotech company. We've got um, a actual product, a soap company. And then we have more of a community-based uh, gaming and virtual reality and kind of a tech experience company pitching as well. So I get, I could see them all being great businesses and working. And uh, unfortunately, one's going to go home with the $5,000 prize, <laughs> but I could see them all making a lot more than $5,000. So it's pretty cool. All this happened in a little old Bemidji. Well, it's, it's, it, we, we say one, one, one 
company wins. But really, you know, um, when you get into that world, you know, it's a, it's a big collaboration. You know, we we try to network with each other and help each other out. We're all facing a lot of the same struggles. So, um, you know, somebody maybe gets the money, but even despite that, you know, you're still going to try and, you know, talk with each other and network with each other, um, you know, because you're, you're all facing the technology issues, you're facing the business issues, you're facing accounting, you're facing, you know, you all have the same issues that you have to try and resolve to, to make that business successful. And uh, so um, it's kind of a, a community where we, we all help each other out where we can. Universities have been teaching math and English and history and, you know, the sciences forever. Tad's still in its fairly infancy stages, is it not? I mean, it's been around for quite a while, but when you think, when teaching history at the university since the first university opened, that hasn't been the case. So is there even a firm grasp across the country from universities as to where TAD is going and where it needs to go, for lack of a better term? Um, well, so you know, it's kind of a unique combination here at Bemidji State with respect to the you know, TAD, technology, art, and design. Um, and you know, and to be honest, when I when I first kind of looked at that, I was like, "That's a weird combination." Because you know, I came from traditional hardcore, you know, electrical engineering, computer engineering, civil engineering, mechanical engineering, um, and here you know we've got you know artsy fartsy people all mixed in with you know the other stuff. But um, it, it ends up working out because you know that's that's a big part of if you're looking at a business side of things, you know who's going to do the branding and who's doing the illustrations and your documents and your flyers and and uh, you know your your conference. Um, you know you're going to put up a booth at a conference to pitch your uh, product, for instance, right? Um, so you know the fact that they are there, um, it actually should be able to couple in quite nicely because. Um, you know, as I say, you know, I, I understand the, the engineering side. I know how to make the gizmos, but somebody's still got to help me turn it into a business, right? I, I need the marketing people. I need the salespeople. I need the branding. I mean, I, I hired out to get my logos and, and graphics illustrations and all of that made. That's, that's money part of, out of your pocket. That's well, but that's that's part of business, right? You know, you need to have that kind of a footprint, and so um, those are the things that I can see um, um, being a, a great opportunity to to, to expand. Um, uh, you know, when when it comes to these pitch competitions and the Minnesota Cup, the same thing. You know, they're looking at you know what what is your traction, what is your market space, what is your branding, and. And, you know, most of the time, you know, for the entrepreneurs, they are passionate about their solution. That's what they want to do. That's what they know. But don't there's, know how to get there. But there's so many other aspects of business that they don't know. And, and that's some of the things that, you know, like the launch pad brings in, right? They, they bring in speakers. They bring in resources to help, you know, people with these great ideas to, to learn about the other parts of how do you actually turn it into a business. You know, it's great to have this passion for whatever your solution is, but, you know, going from hobby to turning it into a, a successful entrepreneurial endeavor is 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 quite a journey, mm -hmm. and there's a lot more resources that you need to bring in to, to make that successful. One of the great things about the Tech Expo, which is part of the GigaZone Gaming Championship Saturday at the Sanford Center, it's all completely free. Um, can the general public come and watch yeah, the, startup the, competition? the pitch competition is held in the main expo area, so not in the gaming area, the big arena. We're just off to the side with all the other exhibitors, and there's a big stage there. Um, people can come and go as they please, and it was really cool to watch last year when people were walking by. You know, we have a big check printed out, $5,000, and people would be walking by and say, oh my gosh, that's awesome, and some of those people applied this year, and a lot of people just like to sit in and watch a couple pitches, and... I think that really helps open up people's mind to the ability or for their ability to then go start a company. You know, their mind is then open to, hey, I don't need to be, you know, this super rich person to start a company or I don't need to be, you know, an electrical engineer. I might just be somebody with a brand idea and then I could partner up with somebody like Brian or I could go up to one of these entrepreneurs after they pitch and say, hey, I really liked your idea. I'd like to help you with it. You know, I'd like to be on your team. And... Um, so yeah, it's right out in the open and you can stop by any time. I think at the peak last year we had about 70 people watching. And so it really is a great venue 
to watch or to pitch your company. And um, applications are closed this year, but if you want to apply, it will be there next, next year. year. And um, there is still an opportunity to apply for the Minnesota Cup, which is basically the statewide version of this pitch competition. Our winner gets an automatic entry into that, um, but that competition is much bigger and badder, uh, if you will. There's $400,000 in prizes. Wow. And uh, Brian went home, when he did it, he went on to the Minnesota Cup and took home $25,000 for, for having the greatest, or the uh, best greater Minnesota company, so the best company outside the Twin Cities, uh, which was a big achievement, and it was the best that anybody in Bemidji has done. Um, so I know you say Little Bemidji, um, this stuff's happening in Little Bemidji, but I think Bemidji is a great place to start a company. And I've seen that with companies like Brian's and Kelly, our winner, our winner last year, went on to get funded with $100,000 from Generators and Motion Accelerator. Um, she's gotten some angel investment, and she actually won four other pitch competitions last year after wow. the North Startup Pitch Competition. So um, it's a great place to start a business. And then you look at some of our judges, too. You know, Eric Hokoff, they're going to have over 100 people on staff pretty soon over there. And they started about 10 years ago. Right here in Bemidji. With like five people. Yep. Yep. So right here in Bemidji is a great place to start a business. Cool stuff. Uh, what time does the competition start if people uh, want to head over to the Sanford Center on Saturday? It's at 3 p.m. It's directly after Duncan goes and speaks on the main stage. So right after the headline speaker at 3 p.m. And it'll be about an hour long. Cool stuff. Brian, Brian, thank you much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you having us. us. Yeah. Morning stretch rolls on. Good morning. It's 835.